What is going on, my friends? Welcome to another Brand Doctor Podcast episode. Today's amazing guest, Super Bowl champ, my man, Satima Ghali. What's going on, my man? My brother, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm looking forward to the show, and I appreciate you inviting me, man. Listen, for those folks that don't know how big of a stud you actually are, let's give them a quick little background on how you got started in entrepreneurship, and we'll go from there. You got it. So I finished up the NFL, right? We'll just, NFL's done. I got a Super Bowl ring under the belt. So shortest, probably the shortest uh, career ever. But when I came home, I, I figured out that I was like, I love having money and lifestyle. And my heart, I wanted to impact people. So I looked around and I was like, there's no way I'm going to go get a job. Like, that's just not what I'm going to do. And a buddy of mine, he showed me a $30,000 check. And I'm like, dude, that's cool. Did you do that last year? And he's like, I did that like last week. I'm like, what? And he said, I'm doing mortgages. So I'm like, what, what's a mortgage? I had no idea what a mortgage was, right? Crazy, ignorant, just this football dude. So I jump into the mortgages. And back then, it was I'm learning how to get leads and close deals and prospect and present myself as a professional. Well, I go crush it in 04, double down in 05, then quadruple in 06. And by 07, we're like in the seven figures. And But I was unhappy and I was unfulfilled. Even though we were making money, my, I remember my wife still, she was like, I can't believe that you made a shift back before the crash. So I knew I wanted to do something but not mortgages or real estate. Cause I had real estate companies, I had mortgage. I was doing hard money uh, development and land development, hard money loaning. And you know, I'm telling you like my heart, there was this calling. So like as an entrepreneur, I, I believe that it's like we're almost called. Like I couldn't work in a job. I could, but I'd probably get fired. I'd be miserable. And it's not my, my heart's calling. So right, that was my starting to be an entrepreneur was the mortgages, starting my own business, having my own real estate company. And right, and then that led us up to the crash. But I love I love the journey. That's where I started was mortgages real estate. Wow. Okay. So tell the folks what you're doing now. Cause I looked at your website and you're doing some amazing things with coaching women, yep. coaching men, you know, and really helping them live their true potential, which is which is right up my alley. <clears throat> yeah. So today, like we run a program called Immersion, and there's Immersion for Men, which is Titan. Used to be Man Month, but we we rebranded it to Titan. Our women's immersion is Shield Maiden. So Shield Maidens are powerful Viking queen warriors who are beautiful, could lead from the throne when it's time to go to battle, belt up, go to war, crush, dominate, come back and lead. Titan is like for the men that we call right. This is titans of industry, godlike, powerful men who've always known, hey, we're, we're, we're leaders. Like we were meant to shine, to be shine, not for us, but shine so we could shine light and show others how to do it. So we run immersion. We have our circle of champions mastermind. I coach one-on-one. -on -one. We have a champions huddle, which is our monthly uh, for people who are just starting brand new or wanting to get going into the world of entrepreneur, uh, being an entrepreneur. And then I speak on stages. I got a podcast. I'm an author. Like we would call today an influencer, a thought leader, a coach. And that's what I do today. And I love it. Like I love my work. I love because I would call it's like my life's purpose, right? It's like my life's calling. I don't look at my like this is just a job. Like there's plenty of ways to make money out there, but I feel very called to do what I do. Like again, there's when people are like, hey, let's go do this real estate deal. We can get your money back. And every time I go, towards real estate again or trading, the voice in my heart's like, uh-uh, not, not yet. You focus on being a an influencer, a coach, showing people and coaching people how to be more successful, how to be more aligned, how to be happier, how to live more fulfillment, how to live their purpose. And so that's what I do today. And I love it, bro. I absolutely love it. What were some of the disciplines in your NFL career that transferred into entrepreneurship that you can say, wow, with those disciplines, it has really helped me in my entrepreneurial career. Yeah, man, there's a lot. Like football, number one, like obvious, grit and hard work. 
smart work. So when I say hard work, we're not just working hard, but we're strategic work and smart work and just the ability to grind. I call it grinding gratefully mm. right, or striving satisfied, as I heard from one of my mentors. That like in football, like it's work. Like it's work. That's how you build muscles work. That's how you build endurance and stamina and skills. It's work. So that without a doubt as an entrepreneur, like you're, whether you have a job or you're an employee of a great company or you're your own guy or gal, you got to know how to work. Second thing is, can you embrace and endure the adversity? No one is immune from adverse football. You're getting hit, right? Can you imagine running full speed <laughs> and some dude just cleans you and you got the snot coming out of your nose and we call it Tento, you're, you can see the bottom of your feet, but right? you gotta learn how to win. You gotta learn how to lose. You gotta learn how to handle losing on the on the field. You lose, and guys, would be, I would be, I would cry. I was a dude who just, I was so mad because I wanted to win. Same thing as an entrepreneur. You gotta learn the game of making money, of learning how to market, learning how to so going from a producer to a leader because producers like like what's well, a trap. We know how to hustle and grind and make our money, but most producers never ever get to that place where they build a team mm. and they scale it. And you know, they get out of producing, they get they start leading. So those are some of the things I, I love sports and I love winning. I love just that team camaraderie. Like yeah. even though I I I have a business, I have a team, and there's nothing like that locker room, like you know, that locker room, the boys. The hugs, the high five, the chants, the cheers, state champ. Like, hey, let's go, baby. Like, we got to win the conference. Like, mm -hmm. that kind of atmosphere is what's needed for entrepreneurs today as well to be successful. Yeah, you got to have that that courageousness. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Satima. <clears throat> Define your ideal client for me and tell me the one thing that really – you're super passionate about meaning let me let me see if i could say this the right way like there's there's a common denominator between your ideal client and this is the one thing that you're really passionate about in helping them trying to fix or work through or to break through what is that common denominator that you see that you can say with confidence that you can help them break through that Got it. With yeah, your process. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Let me raise this up just a little bit. So my ideal client, first and foremost, it is a person who is highly committed. Now, we've got meaning around that, those words. Highly committed means I will do whatever is required. I will absolutely do what I say I will do. I'm going to be my word. And I'm going to take decisive action in spite of my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, and my moods. So a highly committed person, again, we've I've coached entrepreneurs, I've coached executives, dentists, doctors, attorneys, mortgage, real estate, and the common denominator, so there's highly committed, right? Okay. Most of the entrepreneurs I work with, usually typically business owners, entrepreneurs, but then that thing is they want to go to the next level and it's not lip service. And when I say the next level, I'm talking about four areas, physicality, right? Your fitness, your nutrition, your hydration, your rest, recovery, your body, the spirituality, your purpose, your faith, your connection to God, your relationships, your marriage, your connection to your children, like deep, meaningful relationships. So instead of being one dimensional, like I, again, there's people who just purely teach money. And that's awesome. Like again, my good friend, Russell Brunson, right? our good friend, Russell Brunson, right? He's a marketer. The dude's a monster, and he's one of the best at it. Mm -hmm. He's like marketing business message. Me, I'm like physicality, spirituality, okay. relationships, and of course, your finances, your money. So my ideal client are people who are highly committed. They all want to go to the next level across the what we call the big four. Okay. And then they want to be in alignment with their highest purpose. So instead of being one-dimensional success, they're, they're, right, they're four dimensional. They're, they're multi dimensional. Okay. They're successful with their, in their home and their family. They're happy with the purpose and alignment. Okay. Their body is a weapon, it's a tool, it's a temple. They're taking care of it. And of course, they're building like businesses that are optimal, meaning that they're predictable, sustainable. 
that have got real solid marketing, lead magnets and systems, paid ads, organic referral, as well as leadership, culture, and a trajectory, a trajectory for growth. And those are my ideal clients. Okay. What is the biggest thing that holds people back from accomplishing those core four, if you will? Yeah. Biggest things, uh, I'd say the biggest thing, if I, had to somebody, if I had to put it into one, it would be that that person does not know who they really are and what they're capable of. In other words, the stories and the thoughts inside here. That's the biggest thing. Because once a person gets aligned, once they get there, you hear this so many times, mindset, mindset, mindset. But when, when someone says mindset, we're talking about how they view themselves, their self-view. And then with that self-view, it opens up perspectives of possibilities into okay. the worldview or how we view right the world and life. And you're either rooted in scarcity and fear and being fixed or you're rooted in abundance and prosperity and possibilities. Okay. And I just love that if, if a person can get their mind right, mindset first, skill set second, you combine mindset, skill sets, add a tool set or tools, and that, that, per, that person becomes incredibly, like I use words from the athletic, lethal, deadly, mm -hmm. assassin-like, right? Mamba mentality. And what I'm really saying is, like mindset creates the vision, practice develops the skill set, principal dollars follow value. And all of a sudden, this person's out instead of looking at their, their role in the world as a, as a taker, yeah. someone who's going to take. That person then sees their role in the world as a contributor, mm -hmm. as a leader, as a, as a beacon of light. It doesn't matter what business you're in. It could be apparel, could be online, could be fitness, could be a thought leader, could be mortgages. But when you got that, the stories in here, learning how to deal with that, I call them the dragons of doubt, the demons of fear. When you can slay those effectively daily, because it's a daily, it's a daily battle. You don't just do it once. They're always there. You you go to bed, you, you win, you wake up, the dragons and demons are there. So when you can deal with that, man, it's different ballgame, different yeah. ballgame. Yeah. 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 Oh man. I, I'm just thinking back like all those skeletons in my closet that I had to deal with, right. In order to break through and, and get to where I'm at. It, it's just, it, man, it was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of hard work. Let me shift gears right now because we're in a very interesting time of this recording. So we're, it feels like there's some relief in the near future with this whole COVID thing. You know, a lot of people are feeling stuck, frozen, paralyzed. These are the words that I'm hearing from some of my colleagues. Yep. Um, nobody's buying, so why should I go out and market? Why should I go out and put myself out there? Right? What do you say to these 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 folks that are high performance, right? But are starting to maybe second guess or doubt themselves. Yeah. Great. I love it. So I would say to them, if they're doubting themselves, if you're, if you're in a place where you're doubting, like I felt those same thoughts and feelings over the last 45, 60 days, I've had, I've had them, mm -hmm. I haven't entertained them. And here's what I would say to you, right? Uh, number one, challenge your thoughts. That's so good. Those are thoughts. No one's buying. Well, we just closed two tickets to immersion tickets are 10 grand. In the last, we just closed it. We're not even actively marketing for the event, but people find it. They watch our marketing. They get on the phone with my guy and he's like, shut him down. <laughs> the shut them down, close them is our way of ethically helping someone to move forward. So when people say, no one's buying, I'm like, just challenge that. Byron Katie, right? Her incredible book. Is that true? Wait, is what's that, the book? That, what's, the, it, what's the book? So Byron Katie wrote a book number of books, but the book I, I refer to that at the basis of it is called Loving What Is. And she has an incredible work called the, um, we, we call it the process, but she calls it the work. There's, she, she just ask questions. Is that thought true? Is that thought useful? Can you show me evidence that it's actual factual? And for most people, it's all, it's, it, they heard something, 
They saw something when they heard it and they saw it, it caused an emotion, it charged it. And all of a sudden we believe it's true. No one's buying. I'm still spending money. My clients are spending money. I know if I sit and hoard the money and stop, we're, like, we're marketing, we're spending money on ads every day, every week, and we're getting a positive ROI. We're building. Like I'm dumping money into more, more ad campaigns. Why? Because I know I've challenged the source. That's the first thing I would share with someone who's like panicked right now. Challenge your thoughts. And if you need help, right, you reach out to me, go buy the book. There's so many people out there who are like challenge them, question, ask, will this be, will these beliefs and thoughts carry me to what I want? Mm. Is there any reason to hold on to those thoughts? No one's buying. No one's, even the whole thought about like, I'm not going to make it through this. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what if I can't pay my bills? What if you can't? What if you don't pay your mortgage for a month? Yeah. Are they going to kick you out today? No. No, that's for sure. No. Mm -hmm. I've told, I mean, I've had clients like push off their car payments, push off their home payments, because I'm like, you want to have cash. And I'm not saying don't pay. I'm right. saying there's resources and be smart about your cash. And it, look, money goes into a, an asset. You add your business, it's going to come out. We're, we're, we did, we've, we've got like over 150 new clients in the last 45 days. And I can literally screenshot to show you people buying every day from what we're doing. So it's the first thing I want to say is, is challenge and question the thoughts because you think they're real and true. It's like my kids say, there's a clown upstairs in our closet. <laughs> and now I'm like, they're like, don't roll your eyes, daddy. I'm like, oh, there's something wrong with my head. Is there really a clown upstairs? But notice the clown that they believe is in their closet elicits fear, causes emotion, and they don't want to go upstairs. Right. It's like an entrepreneur. No one's spending money. We're going to go out of business. You might go out of business. That's true that you could. But if you're in that energy, very difficult to produce. You know, if the general of the, of, of the war, the general of the battle is like freaking out, it's over. Yeah. But if the general stoic, right? Just like, there's nothing wrong with retreating. If he's like, hey, retreat. But he's calm. He's focused. Or she's calm. She's focused. So that that's a long answer. But I'm telling you, you master this and you can strategically and systematically battle the dragons and the demons. I mean, dude, it, it's like almost 1030. I've been up since 530. I've been cranking, reading, studying, already hit the gym, already, already did the battle ropes with my son. Like we, we do about every hour. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm telling you, man, it's, it's not a time for panic. Yeah. It's a time for purpose and for growth, but man. it all starts here. I love it. I, I listened to your last podcast about chopping wood. And I thought that that was, that was a really great message right now, especially during these times, you know, I'll, 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 I'll just paraphrase the, 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 the episode, you know, you mentioned that, you know, you get up some days and you, you don't want to go to the gym. You don't want to get out there in, in, in the marketplace. You don't want to put yourself out. You, you just, you don't have that drive. It's just not there that day. Right. But the, the big message in that episode was you got to do it anyway. Like you can't go out on the field. You can't go out into the marketplace. You can't go out uh, with your business and not put in that effort behind it because people are going to pick up on that. They're going to feel that energy. And just like you said, you know, are they going to follow the general that is shit in their pants or are they going to follow the general that's just calm and collect and just confident that things are going to be amazing. So that, that was a great message. I wanted to make sure that we get that on, 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 the, give them the name of the uh, podcast, by the way. Podcast is called your daily revolution. Yeah, I love that. And, I, I, you know, I, I chose that because you think about the, the revolution, right? That the revolutionary war against Great Britain as United States of America and, they declared independence. It was a revolutionary war. It was this war of like, no more, no more, you know, and again, my language today is no more poverty, no more scarcity, no more playing small, no more shrinking, no more settling. Like it's a revolution in here, not a bloody revolution, but it's a revolution greater than any revolution that's ever taken place 
takes place here. So I call it your daily revolution because every day you wake up, you got a choice. You got a choice to live in prosperity and abundance and, and move towards that. Or you have the choice to live in scarcity and let the the dragons and demons beat you up. And some days they win. Some days they they get me, but not for the whole day. Right. Like this, you know, good point. Like this morning, I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to go to the gym. I had a 6 a.m. session. Here we have a gym that's still open. We go into like I'm high five. I'm like, people can hate on me. I'm hugging and high fiving people. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like, look, I just I, I'll keep my opinions on that on the side, but I'm hot. I did not want to go, but I've got a compelling future. My yeah. goals, my outcomes, my, my trophies, yeah. my prize that I want. And when I, that's compelling and convincing, rooted in the whole, dude, that, that pulled me out of bed. I yeah. walked to the back. I'm tired. I got gratitude and visualization. And I'm like, hey, but what, you could, like, once I got to the gym, I was like, game on. <laughs> Yeah, man. I was telling I was telling people before when I was hyping up this episode, I said, Satim is probably going to be the closest thing that I'm going to get to the rock. <laughs> <laughs> so and I've been getting really I've been getting really lucky, lucky with podcast guests. You never know. He might come on the show. I'm not going to rule it out. Right. <laughs> we'll get him. We gotta but, get the man, rock, man. Right. But I'm telling you, man. And, and I want to wrap up the show with this. Yeah. Satim, where did you get? this passion for people and the, this, this drive of go getter and, and just willing to give so much, you know, I, I really want to hear that backstory, you know, in the next five, 10 minutes so we can get a real round 360 of, of who Satima Gali really is. You know, um, man, I'm going to say for my mom and dad, um, my parents were born and raised in Samoa. And they they came to the United States. I was born here, first generation born in the United States. They came from the islands, learned a new language. Um, nine kids, wow. worked every odd end job. Never, we, never had brand, we never had a brand new car until I was in high school. We were the oldest, rickety, hokey. You know, just beaters until I was in high school. I saw my mom and dad. They got divorced. They remarried by both sets of my parents. Just they could, they did, they did it. And sometimes I'm like, how did you do it? But I know how they did it. They, they, they dug into their talents and, and they did what they was they needed to do. And so, obviously, my, the example of my both sets of my parents. Right. Second thing is. I had heroes, people like uh, my parents are definitely heroes, but there's people I looked up to and I'm like, I want that. Like at a young age, I was like, I want that. And I, I felt this want and desire in my heart just come alive. Now, I, you know, people like, oh man, you're always on fire. I'm, no, I'm not always on fire. And, and sometimes I'm a, I'm a very, I call it a motel, you know, I'm a five-star daddy, like five-star, like or I'm a Motel 6 daddy. Sometimes I'm just not that good. Like sometimes I yell at my, sometimes I'm short and patient. Sometimes I carry my work to my home. But man, I, I want to be the best five star daddy, five star husband, like five star resorts. You ever stay in five star? I know you have. It is like unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And I won't be, able to, I want that. I want to be able to look back and say, man, my, my kids and I, we are close. My clients and I, we are like, I've helped them to get results. And I lived, here we go. I've lived the full measure of my creation. Like mm-hmm. I went to my grave empty because I lived and emptied my tank and I have zero regret. So come from my parents and then just seeing other incredible inspirational people that I'm like, I want to be like them. I, you know, get old. My, I want to be like Mike. Lift, that I could be like Mike. There's Michael Jordan, but I had other incredible Zig Ziglar, uh, mm-hmm. Jim Rohn. Yeah. Like Tony Robbins. Yeah. I look at some of these NFL players when I was younger. I was like, I want to be like that. Yeah. And then, and then the last thing about that is, it's something that you develop. People think it's like it was given. No, it, you might have a tiny seed of it of desire and fire and hunger, yeah. but make no mistake, it is something you develop and something you grow. And something you water and something you practice until that, like people are like, where did the hunger come from? I was like, you grow your hunger. Yeah. 
Yeah. By studying, by practicing, by doing the work every single day. And I love it. Like, I just, I don't want to go to my grave with regret. I, I looked at funerals. I'm like, nah, man, like I, I'm clear. I know what I want my kids to say. I know what I want my wife to say. I know how I want to live on a daily, what I call daily life experience. Mm. And I'm clear about it. Satima, my man. I didn't know that about you, man. We come from a very interesting and 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 very similar upbringing, and and um, my parent my parents didn't come from from the islands, but I went through a very horrible divorce. I, well, my parents did right when I was six years old. You know, no, I'm sorry, ten years old to sixteen years old. I mean, those are the prime growing years of, of, of a child's life, right? I've seen things that I, I never really wanted to see and, and I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. You know, the whole, the whole story about the, the car, my father still has a 1974 pickup truck that, <laughs> right? Listen, it was, it was booger green. Oh, he still got this thing. It's got a camper cap on. It looks like he has like dead people in the back. And he would, and, and he, and I would make him drop me off down the block when he would drop me off at girl's house or at friend's house. Cause I was so embarrassed. And, you know, when I saw my, my wealthy uncle on the other end, you know, right styles that are rich and famous, like, you know, like the way people treated him, the way the cars, the houses, right. His recognition. I was like, I want that, you know, but I realized that like, there's a way to go about it. And unfortunately I, I had to learn the hard way of go, going about that. And I just say to everybody out there, like choose your road. And if you're going to, you're, you're going to fall down, you're going to skin your knee. You might break a leg or two, but get back up and keep going. Because those are the lessons that God needed you to understand and go through for you to be the person that you are today. And, you know, Satima, if you didn't have those experiences growing up, I don't know if you would be the same Satima that I'm talking to today. So I love, I love you sharing that. And, and you know, I'm a big brand guy. So if I don't ask my guests why they do what they do and where that all comes from, then I'm not doing my job to help you get your message out there. So last but not least, where can people learn more about you and the immersion program and all the services and products that you offer to your people? Yeah. Just go to my site. It's my first and last name, Setemangali.com, S-E-T-E-M-A-G-A-L-I.com. And everything is there. Again, we've got an email list. We've got a lot of free things just so we can give people a, a, a real solid taste of what we do. We've got monthly coaching. We've got high and masterminds. We've got one-on-one -on -one coach. We've got the immersion events. And, you know, my goal, I'll say this boldly here, because I said it on the other podcast. I want to be the, the world-class premier coaching and leadership training for results that matter. Global, like global. Like I, I grew up watching Stephen Covey and the whole Franklin Covey, Seven Habits, like, whoa. And my days and more than ever now because of social media and, and online marketing, the internet. I want to be world-class. When people talk about results or leadership or development, they're like, oh, dude, that's Satema's company. Or well, that's that, like that's them. You want to be five star daddy, husband, wife, you want to have alignment and harmony and like what some call balance. You want to do that? That's the Tema. That's what I want to be known for. And that's the, the vision we're building for a global, world class leadership and training. I love it. Let me just wait one more second here and I'm going to put this www.satemagale.com and then. Just I want to throw that on the video here yeah. so people can grab that. And uh, for those folks that are going to be listening in on iTunes and Spotify, it's S-E-T-E-M-A-G-A-L-I.com. Satima, what a pleasure. Thank you, my friend, for taking time out of your day to share your experiences and your story with me and my audience. Brother, I'm honored. And by the way, I'm a junior too, man. I should have put junior. <laughs> I'm a junior. So brother, God bless. Thank you, Henry. I'm, I'm so, so grateful and honored. Thank you.